Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today I'll be showing you guys this amazing blender add-on called Simply Cloth. This video will demonstrate basic uses of the add-on and how to make sense of the interface, how to inflate surfaces like this chair pillow, how to deflate an object around a specific mesh for some interesting effects, how to work with simple cloth collisions, how different fabrics behave when simulated, how to sew simple patterns together, and how to use pinning to pin cloth wherever we need it. The add-on itself costs just $19 and you can find it in both the Blender Market and Gumroad store. What it does is make cloth simulation insanely simple, hence the name Simply Cloth. No need for scrolling down complicated menus which make little sense, or at least to me they don't. <laughs> Simply Cloth's UI is super streamlined and gives you everything you need in just one window to get some cloth physics going in just a matter of seconds. So once you've downloaded the zip folder, all you need to do is open preferences, go to add-ons, hit the install button and find the zip folder. Don't unzip the folder, Blender will do it for you. When it shows up, just toggle the little square to activate the add-on. Oh, by the way, if you want to know more about the add-on in further detail, and if I somehow missed something during this video, there's a Google document explaining every aspect of the add-on, so I'll link that below for you guys. To get started, add some geometry to your scene. The menu will only show up once you've introduced some geometry in there. Let's hit make cloth and go through the settings. As you can see, there's a bunch of options. In the presets panel, you can choose different presets for your cloth animation. Oh, I love this feature. In this scene, you can see that I've chosen a few of the presets to demonstrate how the cloth will behave when simulated. Every one of these materials have different properties corresponding to the logic of the fabric itself. This pretty much takes out all the guesswork out to the material properties, which is awesome. <laughs> and you can always tweak these properties and rerun the simulation until you get a perfect result. So let's hit play. Wow, magic. I can stop the simulation wherever I want, and if I zoom in, you can see that those parameters actually did help define how the different fabric behaves. The paper one is much stiffer than the crease one, which has lots and lots and lots of overlaps and wrinkles, and the leather falls somewhere in between. By the way, if you're wondering how I textured these, there's a paid add-on called Extreme PBR Evo, which I will be covering in a future video. But if you want to buy it now, there's a link in the description and pinned comment below. So let's talk about the user interface and parameters a bit. All of the options listed here are options that you can already find in the physics properties panel on the right. It's just organized a bit better and much easier to understand. So Bake From Cash, I'm not too familiar with, but what it does is basically storing the result of the calculation into the memory. So the next time it runs, it can run faster. If you bake the simulation, you will be unable to change any of the simulation settings unless you hit free bake. I don't really use this since I don't work with animations, so when I'm done with the simulation, I just hit apply cloth or you can apply all of the modifiers manually in the modifier panel. That way you can kind of start sculpting on the fabric itself in sculpt mode. Gravity is how strong the force of gravity will be in the scene and the speed is basically just the speed of the entire simulation. Start end defines the keyframes in which the simulation will play. It's usually set to 250 on the end, but if you don't need that many keyframes, set the end to a lower number. Or if you want the animation to run longer, you can set that to a higher number. Check face orientation basically lets you make sure which faces are facing outwards and which faces are facing inwards. And this is especially useful for meshes that have an inside, like a cube or a sphere. The blue should be facing outwards and the red should be facing inwards. In edit mode, you can choose to flip these faces by pressing flip normals. This is especially important when applying any of the pressure options as the normals will tell the add-on which direction to add or decrease the pressure. Quality steps basically sets the quality of the animation. So if you're playing around to get different effects, you can set this value lower for a faster but more inaccurate simulation. 
but if you're looking for a more high quality and more realistic simulation, bump the value up just a little. Same goes for the collision quality. Weight just defines how heavy the cloth is, so paper is obviously much lighter than leather, which is lighter than the crease cloth. As for stiffness, the leather, for example, is set to 100, which gives us that nice folding overlap feeling. Folds basically defines the amount of times the cloth can be folded on top of each other, as I've understood. So in our example, crease is set much higher than leather, which was set to zero. Now shrink is a very interesting parameter. If you set this to a negative value, it expands the cloth, but if you set it to a positive value, it shrinks. Be careful and work with low numbers here because the cloth can freak out if you're not careful and blunder my crash. Smoothing basically just applies smooth to the entire mesh, but I, I rarely use this one to be honest. To see the advanced parameters options, just press the button and you'll see four new menus. I'll be going through all of these with examples, so let's just put that on pause for now. Subdivision modifier just basically adds a simple subdivision modifier automatically before the simulation is played. You can see this in the modifier tab, so it's a non-destructive way of adding more faces to your mesh. But just be careful because if you've sewn any seams and then add a subdivision modifier, that will kind of mess everything up, so you'll have to kind of reapply the seams after that. And same goes for the pins as well. Wireframe toggles wireframe on and off, and density paint here is very interesting. You can choose where to add more density in terms of faces. So the blue is where there will be less geometry, which gives a lower quality look, and the red is where it's being fully affected and you'll get the highest amount of detail. If you hit the button, you'll be in weight paint mode, and here you can choose to paint in the density based on the weight meter you set at the top. You also get some options to smooth, offset the weight paint, and so on under the weights menu. Just be careful though, if you paint with blue, this can create glitches in the cloth because there's not enough resolution in certain areas. So if you toggle wireframe or enter edit mode, you'll see the result of your painting and you can maybe add in subdivisions if that's necessary. The collision button basically adds a simple collision to an object, which is the same one you can find in the physics tab. The collision in our scene will basically prevent the cloth from falling through the floor and gives it a surface to interact with. If you choose a cloth mesh and hit tab to go into edit mode, you get a few new options. Subdivide, unsubdivide adds more faces to your object, but this is a somewhat destructive way of working, so just be careful. Usually I tend to just use the subdivision modifier in the previous menu instead. As for pinning and sewing, I'll be touching on that in a demonstration, so let's get started. I'll be demonstrating five different uses of the add-on. So our first will be inflation, more specifically inflating a pillow. So all you need to do is add in a cube, scale it down on the C axis and add in a few subdivisions in edit mode. I don't want to go crazy here as I can always increase the subdivision later on. And then I'm going to hit create cloth. I'm going to choose pressure as a preset and in edit mode choose vertex select and let's go to the side, hit alt C and select all but the top vertices. With shift I'll also select a few at the top here. This is where all the buttons will go. Now in pin group select create new pins. This will make it so that the selected errors will be completely unaffected by the simulation. Head into object mode and let's do some simulation magic. Press play and you can see that all areas except for the pinned areas have now been inflated and we have ourselves a nice little comfy pillow. It's a bit low quality so let's add in a few more levels in the subdivision modifier window and reset the simulation before running it again. And as a cherry on top, let's add in some buttons and some texture and voila, a nice comfy cushion. <laughs> Next is the opposite, so deflating cloth using the shrink pressure preset. I'm just going to use Suzanne for this demonstration and add in a shrinking fabric that will shrink inwards and wrap itself around Suzanne. 
So for the fabric, I'll add in a rounded cube, which I'll increase the resolution for and cut off the lower half. I want to make sure it covers Suzanne entirely. Add a collision modifier to her and the shrink pressure preset to the cloth. I'm going to change just a few things here. I'm going to add in one more extra level on the subdivision modifier, set the shrink value to zero, increase the pressure to minus 10, set the stiffness to one, bump up the quality, increase the folds, decrease the speed, and finally increase the gravity. By the way, pressure will determine the force in which the cloth moves inwards or outwards. These things take a lot of trial and error, so just play around here and see what you come up with. The collision distance is especially important here, so head into the physics properties and under thickness outer, I'm going to set the parameter to 0 0.002. I might also decrease the distance collision a bit. Let's play around with the sim and see what we get. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> Reminds me of a Suzanne Dementor. The cloth intersects a bit with the model, but you can always polish this in sculpt mode later on. For our third example, let's add a nice blanket over this woman. I'm not a prude, I swear. We'll try out different presets to see what looks best. Let's set up a plane, subdivide it a bunch of times, and position it over the woman. We want both the chase and woman to act as collisions and possibly the floor, so let's make them all collisionable, if that's even a word. I kept running into the problem of the cloth slipping, so what you have to do is add more friction to your collision objects and that should stop the cloth from slipping. I set the chase and model to about 50 and 80. And remember, we need to head into the physics properties and under thickness outer, set the parameter to 0.002. That way it will conform to the shapes much better and give more accurate and realistic results. So let's do a test simulation. And that looks pretty good, but I'm just gonna adjust a few things here. And yeah, it looks awesome. For our fourth example, let's sew a skirt for this man, cause why the heck not? I mean, I live in Scotland, so I'm pretty used to seeing men in skirt. I, I, I mean kilts. <laughs> Again, using a model from Daz, I created a cylinder and made sure that the ends do not have any caps. I positioned the cylinder right outside the model and sized down the top to match the waist, but made sure it didn't intersect with the model. I then increase the outside of the skirt, or the bottom half, so that we can get some nice folds in the simulation. I then chose to delete some vertices on the sides, and with the edges now exposed, I chose to sew them together in edit mode. Now when we run the simulation, you'll probably notice the skirt slipping, so I added more friction to the model and I also pinned some of the vertices close to the body to just keep it up just in case. That way it wouldn't slip down. I mean, that would be scandalous. Adjusting some of the settings, we got a pretty decent result. Now isn't he fabulous? For our fifth and final example, let's create a hammock and play around with pinning. First, let's add in a plane and in edit mode, press M to merge all the vertices to one vertex. And in the side view, let's turn on snapping, which is that little magnet in the top middle window. And under the menu, let's choose increment. The vertex will now snap to the orthographic grid. Let's create this jagged shape by extruding, and when we have five peaks, let's extrude all of these points outwards. Next, let's enable snapping, but choose vertex this time, because I want to snap all the peaks to the end of the ropes, so just choose a peak and press G to move it to the rope ends, and it should snap there automatically. If you have any extra flaps to the side, just delete those vertices. After that, let's add subdivisions to the mesh and make sure that we make them look as square as possible. This will result in the most optimized mesh and it won't look as stretched. In edit mode, choose all the jagged edges that we chose earlier and press create pins. 
That will make it so that these areas do not move, so the rest of the fabric kind of falls down, but these points stay up. Okay, that's that. I think for this hammock, we can choose rubber as hammock fabrics are usually a bit thicker to support that extra weight. And I think the dips in the fabric will look nicer that way. Since the fabric is pretty stretched right now and hammocks usually hang down in the middle, let's decrease the shrink value to minus 0.15 and press play. I say that's pretty damn good. The ropes aren't exactly touching the hammock right now, but you can edit all that later. As you can see, pinning can be very handy for hanging fabric or if you want to keep the fabric in place, like with our handsome skirt model. And that's pretty much all the examples. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Again, links to Simply Cloth and Extreme PVR Evo can be found in the description below or in the pinned comment. I mean, $19 is a ridiculously good price for such an amazing add-on. I've certainly used it a ton in my illustrations so far. Oh, and just a heads up, I recently bought the garment tool add-on from Gumroad and plan to experiment and learn how to make clothing in Blender so that I can in return teach you guys. I'll hopefully have a tutorial out sometime next month. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you learned a lot and I hope if you purchase the add-on that you enjoy it and find lots of uses for it. See you later guys, bye!